why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Mark, what's up, man? Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, Winston Davis here with Move Up. We do mover and driver recruiting along with headhunting for sales and management roles in the moving industry. Awesome. That's great. I uh, We've chatted a couple times in person and on the phone about what you do. Now, I interview a lot of moving company owners, and I really wanted to have you on the show because the struggles are real, right? Yeah. We all know like, trying to yeah. find qualified people is uh, the toughest part. One of the biggest things when I first started was there was the street, you almost call it cash corner. You drive by, you'd scope out, you'd look at, you know, oh, you know, uh, how is this guy dressed? You know, who doesn't look like a pirate today? And, you know, does this guy, you know, have both legs? <laughs> can they walk to the car? And then you're going, hey, can you work? Like, let's let's go, let's go. You know, uh, do you got a buddy here too? Because we need three guys. And, uh, and it becomes a struggle. So, yeah. you know, tell me how you got involved in and in, in the, in the fun part of consulting, moving companies about how to hire uh, the right individuals. Yeah. So um, for me, it all started, uh, I was coming out of school looking for a job. I saw on Indeed, this job title said truck captain. I was a collegiate track and field athlete. So I just saw the word captain was like, oh, this must be something for me. Uh, long story short, got in with a franchise moving in junk hauling company, was there for three or four years and then realized like I need to own my own business. Like that's the thing <laughs> to do, I guess, you know, and Sure. Um, uh, some friends encouraged me to start move up and uh, we just kind of hit it at the right time. You know, there is a little bit of timing with our story. Um, and, and we figured out doing recruiting and hiring for moving companies is a big need. Now, when you first got involved with the moving company that you're working for, were you like just as a helper? Were you a driver? Did they just throw you right into the office? Yeah. So I originally got hired as a helper. Um, and uh, that that didn't last too long. I mean, I might have been on the trucks for like two weeks and then because I interviewed in like a suit and tie and the guy had already talked to me about doing sales. So sure. I went on the trucks really just to understand it a little bit and then transition into moving sales pretty quickly. Do you find that in the industry it's almost worthwhile, uh, especially if you're going to be working in the office or when you are you know, almost like vetting somebody to come work into sales that... Uh, they come in and go, okay, I want you on the trucks. I want you on like a pack job. I really want you to understand it because sometimes just reading off a piece of paper and doing a moving training tutorial means nothing when you are supposed to sell that product. Yeah, I think it's essential. I think you have to do that. Um, it doesn't mean they have to go work in the field for like, you know, two to four weeks straight. But, um, you know, let's say it's just like an inside sales rep. Like, let's say it's a lady. Uh, yeah, just like at least visiting the job, you know, sure. and spending a little time watching, talking with a customer. Um, it's a, to me, it was so helpful because I knew nothing. I mean, I, I had no idea. And um, yeah, it gave me a lot of perspective. And then there's the like, sometimes the battle between like the guys in the field and then the office, you know, if you got like a big sales team, the guys in the field just think like they're sitting in AC doing nothing making all this money, you know, and they're doing all the hard oh, work. Yeah. yeah. They want to throw you under the table. They yeah. want to go, this guy did not book this move correctly. I'm showing up to this job oh. site. What did he do wrong? He has no idea what's happening on the move job. Yeah. So um, I think that it built a little bit of trust with the guys. Cause I mean, they're, they're the ones, they're, they're the ones getting it done. So like, sure. you know, I, I'm a big advocate of, you have to put the guys, you know, at the front of the line. Um, and I mean, everybody's important, but uh, their job's really hard. So yeah, it, it definitely helped for me. And I recommend it out. Right. To people to work with. Now, now finding the right person, uh, I'd like you to imagine a scenario. All right. So when you want to find these people, like close your eyes, imagine the scenario. Imagine it that you had superheroes applying for a moving company job. Now, I mean, people would be like, oh, I really want Superman. I, you know, I want so-and-so. This guy's going to be killer on the move job. But in your opinion, who would make the cut? And who would surprisingly like totally just flunk this interview? Like, oh my God, why did this guy even show up for a job? How would you help the moving company navigate through like an unusual hiring process? 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is fun. <laughs> this. Right. Um, so who would make the, I mean, obviously you think first superhero you think of, you think Superman, but um, think about like Flash. Right. Flash definitely gets hired. Of course. The dude sure. can just like, boom, <laughs> be here and there in a, in a, in a milli, in a millisecond. So right. uh, who else gets hired? Superwoman definitely gets hired. She would okay. be a police crew leader. Yeah, the think about the direction she would give on the jobs, you know. Um, and but now Flash. So now Flash. Flash comes in. He comes in the interview. This guy's super fast. I'm the moving company owner. I'm like, oh dude, this guy's got to go. He's yeah, too oh, fast. The then, jobs are getting the jobs are getting done yeah. way too fast. Hey, we just have to charge a premium premium price for a premium service. Um, yeah, you're not charging per the hour anymore. You're charging per the second. Yeah. Now, who I I would not hire, who would I think flunk the interview is right. going to be the Hulk. The Hulk. The Hulk. Oh, Hulk. okay. Because like this guy is going to have uh, a freaking irrational outburst and bash my customer upside the head with a thousand pound gun safe. You know, it's like he's going to sure. hurt people. He's uh, the road rager. He's the guy on the back of the truck that's just losing on everybody and now wants to throw the truck. Yeah. And then like Spider-Man, he might get hired, but part time because he's never going to have any good availability for us. He's out crime, like fighting crime sure. in the middle of the night in a suit, you sure. know? So yeah. uh, he's, he's the guy who's making, he's the guy who's making the excuses. Uh, yeah. And then yeah. Um, Iron Man, you know, we're, we're going to bring him on, but he's going to be like, he's not just going to be a mover. He's going to be like, like the head of, of AI for the business, the head of innovations. So he's gotcha. going to be, Ooh, I like that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's awesome. Yeah. So I, I went and checked out your website. Okay. And, you know, what I'll, maybe some people perceive is going, okay, I really am looking for uh, some new hires. I want to find someone. But on your website, what I really noticed, which I thought was something uh, that I actually thought was really cool, is that you actually have training videos that you can purchase and download or ways to help in your business uh, when you are doing have that new hire. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, so probably the the biggest one that I talk about, the, the one I talk about the most is um, uh, a system called HEOS that I, I set up called, uh, it's an hourly employee onboarding system. And you could apply this if you were like painting company or you're a flooring company or HVAC. Like you could do this with any, really any business that has a lot of frontline hourly workforce, but moving companies is our world. So, um, yeah, we've got, I spent last year hours, hours making tons of video content for moving owners. So that way they knew what to do once they hired someone. So like we have content courses on retention strategies because that's like one of the biggest problems. Totally. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, cause it's so hard for like my whole team's remote. And we're great at what we do with getting you talent in the door, but then it sometimes it's like they just have the same problem and they keep coming back to us. And it's like, well, it leaves us scratching our head a little bit. And so that's why I made that stuff. So how to onboard people really well, retention strategies, um, how to, you know, how to do rewards and consequences really well, right? Okay. How to terminate. How do you how do you terminate people without having a big blow up? And, and do you have, team. and do you have like a separation on uh, having someone in the office as opposed to having a driver? Like I find that it's sometimes a different challenge mm -hmm. when I have a driver or a helper that works for us as opposed to someone in my office that is either doing sales or administration or operations or dispatch, right? Yeah, and that's where the 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 complexity comes in. You know, you have, I think, a broad umbrella of like standards and values and a mission mm -hmm. of your business. But then you almost have a subset of like department values and expect, not values, but expectations between like the guys in the field versus the folks that are in the sales department or people that are in like dispatch and operations because they have like their own little worlds. And if I treated every mover the same way that from an expectation standpoint, from the way that I treat like an outside sales rep, like my outside sales rep, I, I kind of let them be very independent and they like, they're much more freely flowing and independent in their work. Whereas 
you know, a driver, um, you know, we're, we're probably looking at a couple things just every day, every day, no matter what, even if they're great, because things change very quickly. You have a driver, they've been amazing for six months, and then it's like a light switch went off. And now, now they're just a totally different human being. Um, right. So it's just, it's different complexity. So yeah, you so the style is different. Yeah, and I I would think that would be great when you are uh, in that hiring process because you want to find someone that is the concept of good fit, right? Mm -hmm. So someone that adapts to the culture, someone that is adapting to that company. Uh, I'm a business owner. I'm looking for somebody in the office, right? So what things that we talk about is uh, in the moving company, in the moving world, any business really. How how is your culture? You know, are you filling that fridge up with Gatorades for the drivers? Are you, uh, you know, having social events and, and keeping everybody inclusive? When you are looking for the right candidate for that company, do you vet that? Like, do your people in your office, uh, through the process of asking questions to the moving company owner, go, we want to find the right fit. How does that look like? What's, how do you guys play that out? Yeah. So from a, from a Sysmax standpoint, like every client goes through like a kickoff call and then we have monthly review calls and all of those are really come down to what you're talking about is the fine tune adjustment, the characteristics, the cultural and attitudinal fits. So like things that we want to conversate about is we might ask, for example, Hey, do you guys do any company team outings? Okay. What was the last thing that you did? How often do you do them? What do you, does everybody go or is it just for the guys? Is it the office staff also there hanging out with the guy? Like every every moving company operates different. Like some of them, they just totally separate those two worlds. Like maybe their salespeople and, and managers are in a totally different building. Right. No. Um, it, it's very different. Uh, you know, moving companies are signing up on uh, services with like virtual sales call centers. I know some moving companies, they don't even have salespeople anymore. Locally. Right. They, yeah. Everything. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So we might ask about something like that, or we might ask about um, what is like, what do you constantly hang your hat on? Like what is winning in your company? Oh, or like we're super focused on like building, building your house, right. Building your household. Um, so maybe that's a guy coming in and like, he's got a small child. And uh, maybe he's been split up from his, the spouse that he had that child with. And it's like building that person up. Not every business is like that. Um, I believe every business cares about their people. I want to hope, uh, right? But not everybody walks it out. So when we start writing the copy in the ad work for those positions, we may really try to pose those things of, hey, like this is the nature of this company. And this is the feeling that you have when you're there. And so the person that says, I care about a company that asks me about my kids and wants to know what I'm doing this weekend, we try to write more to that. Gotcha. Yeah. And it's, it's, everybody has so many different characteristics mm -hmm. and different needs and, and wants when it comes to hiring that uh, you have a big task ahead of you to find that right individual. It's a big task. <laughs> it's a big task. <laughs> Mover drivers. I find yeah. I find like our headhunting service with placing like office staff, sales managers, CSR stuff like that. I find that to be a much easier world than the mover and driver recruiting. The movers and drivers. There's a reason no other business, at least to my knowledge, is specialized in moving and storage and helps you hire direct hire right. movers and drivers. It's just it's near impossible. Now. Near in our in our area in Vancouver, there are companies out there that are kind of like that labor ready company that I get emails all the time, right? They're like, hey, we specialize in moving companies. This is what we do. They give you the cost rate and you hope and pray that those guys even show up, right? So you go, okay, great. You know what? We're going to be busy. It's month end. I need two or three guys. Can, you know, can you help me out? And you hope that at least one show up. Yeah. Right. So in those scenarios, when we're looking for like the right candidates, have you been in a situation? Because let's be honest, like it happens uh, at move up where you have hired somebody and they just don't show up. Like first day comes around, oh. they're just like 
see you later. They haven't showed up. Yeah, happens all the time. Okay. Yeah, all the time in every market, no matter where you're at. Um, and, and obviously we're predominantly in the U S but I've done work in Canada too. And I, I don't hey, know. Don't jump, don't jump, don't jump my questions. I'll lead to you working in Canada. Hey, so, hey. all right. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. It's everywhere. And it, it doesn't matter whether you're doing it just in house, doing recruitment in house, right? Or if you're outsourcing it to an agency, whether it's like a direct hire agency or a temp agency or what, um, you're gonna have people not show up for interviews when they say they were gonna show up. They could literally tell you two hours before that morning, I'm gonna be there, and then not show up, and then not come to their first day at work after you gave them a job and they like sign stuff. Sure, it's still gonna happen. For everybody. Now I'm using move up and this happens. What yeah. happened? Like, give me like the rundown scenario so yeah. that our listeners know, okay, I, I want to sign up with move up. I, I really want to test them out. And uh, a situation comes up, which we hope doesn't happen, but like, let's, you know, cut to the issues that can happen. Um, yeah. Which they do. Is there like a customer support line that they call? Is there uh, someone they can yell at on the phone going like, Where, where's Mr. John Doe? Why isn't he here? You can always call and yell at me, but um, no, that's a joke. Uh, uh, you know, the, the thing that's cool about us is that we do a hire as many as you need, Mom. We don't charge per hire for the mover driver side. So, you know, a big thing for us is like we have to put numbers in our favor. And so we know the attrition rates. We know what that sequence is gonna look like. We know that it's gonna take 100 candidates to get one to two hires. We know okay. it. Sure. And so we know, all the, we know all the percentages ranges for every segment, whether it's from the candidate to that first touch or the first touch to your in-person interviews booked, in-person interview booked to they showed up, showed up to they got an offer, offer to the sticking rate, which we call stick rate, like that person's, they showed up, for their first day of work and they made it to 30 days. Like we, do, we, we measure something called a 30 day stick rate or a 90 okay. day stick rate because that's the biggest churn uh, once you hire people is the first 90 days. And so, um, yeah, if you have somebody and they like, hey, I hired this guy and he didn't show up on the first day. Totally get it. It happens. Welcome to the moving industry. We have right. five people. We have five more people that are booked today. That are just waiting to, to come in. Yeah. So it's, it's, and, and, and we, we book these appointments straight on the moving company owner's calendar. It syncs up to their Outlook or Gmail, uh, Google calendar. And the, the key concept is recruiting year round. Okay. And your initiative can be different throughout the year. So like during the spring and summer, I'm probably ramping up and I'm doing a bigger volume game, but in like right now, end of October, going into the winter, I'm focus I'm not going to stop recruiting, but I'm going to focus on dialing in the the right people that meet a certain standard and I might try to raise those screening standards a little bit. Maybe I'm le letting I'm separating from a couple duds on my team and I'm trying to get my core group really strong. Um but we we never want to turn off the recruitment engine. Yeah, you yeah, really got to keep that that Rolodex moving. Yeah. 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 Now, mm -hmm. when it comes to finding the right guy, I, I like this because we're gonna we're gonna pivot on here. Uh, but before I pivot, I really want to expand on the Canada side of things. Okay. So we you, we you stole my question a little bit before you start jumping into Canada. It's all good. Uh, I've I've hounded you about this a little bit too because you're located where in the states? Uh, my wife and I we live in Virginia, so okay. we're in the south. Right. So super far from Vancouver, Canada, and pretty far. And we're looking at trying to uh, find an operations manager. I'm trying to find a dispatcher. I'm trying to find a sales consultant or even an office admin. How does that look like for Canadian moving companies that want to use your service, but they're maybe hesitant because they go, well, are you just sourcing out Americans and and is that, is that going to have to do with like a visa process and importing them into Canada? Like, how does that look like? Yeah, so there's a little more complexity, but what's cool is um, Canada is actually a really uh, easy, like, pivot or sidestep into a new country or new new big market. So, like, with the office side, 
you know, do you guys have LinkedIn in Canada? Yeah, we sure do. do. Have, do you have Indeed in Canada? We sure don't like it, but yes, we do. You have it. Do you have ZipRecruiter in Canada? We do. Do you have people in general? <sighs> In Canada, Hor no, no, horrible. Right now, right, right now, we're failing on that market. I think after yeah. COVID, we're just failing on finding good people. Yeah. So. so, like, the infrastructure is still there in a different, like, for example, in Canada, or whether we were talking about like Australia or wherever. And so, you know, we have the ability from an online standpoint to work in a different country, right? right. It's to set up that from our end, from our corporate accounts, but then. There's just a little bit of a bigger challenge when we go into somewhere that maybe we don't already have a big list of, of contacts. And so we have to be even more aggressive and we have to do more cold outreach, more uh, direct message recruiting, DM recruiting is what we call it. So it's just that we have to sink our teeth in more. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So, but it, the possibility is there. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We have people that message into us like weekly from Canada. That oh, are like okay. moving industry professionals. Sure. Um, that are like, hey, I heard I like heard about you or found you. I don't know how they find us, I guess. But um, sure. and uh, you know, we we put them in our database, and we're in our database. We can put whatever country somebody's in. It's not just limited to the U.S. So right. you know, we'll put put them in for Canada, and um, you know, our our pipeline we can filter that based on city, state. Now in the in Canada, Perfect. you guys don't call them cities and states. You guys call them different stuff. Uh, cities and provinces. Provinces. Thank you. Yeah. So cities, cities are the same though. Cities are the same. Good. Yeah. Uh, so we can filter on all that, right? And so okay. we're we're gonna we're gonna dominate Canada too. We'll help we'll help Vancouver. I love it. Perfect. I like it. Yeah. Well, the East Coast and the West Coast, we need guys a lot. So the West Coast it's, is tough. Yeah, I can imagine. So, you know, it's funny when you look at uh, the technology that's out there, yeah. we, we deal with so many apps all the time. Yeah. Can you imagine if there was a dating app for moving companies? <laughs> my and, wife, my wife and I met on a dating app. I know all, I know oh, all. Did about, you? How did you guys, which dating app? We met through Hinge. Um, okay. It's the, only, it's the only dating app I ever use, just to be clear. Um but anyway, it's not to die. But it's, but, it's, but, it's, but it's deleted off your phone now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just in case your wife's listening, we want to make sure that's out of the door. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, when it comes to those things, you know, the whole big like shh, swipe, swipe left, swipe right. Yeah. Uh, it's, that's after my time. I've been long married before those apps came out. But yeah. what do you think would be the most sought after traits on that profile? So like if I'm a like if I'm a a mover candidate and I'm on a yeah date, if you're, that's right no not even a dating app so like there's a mover app where I can just sit on there and I'm hunting down my movers right so I'm oh, on this oh, wow. I'm on this mover app that's almost like a dating app right and I'm just like yeah. I'm gonna swipe left what do you think when someone is looking to not just become the not yeah. the moving owners that are looking for the right people but let's say I'm the candidate what yeah. traits would you say are uh, most wanted uh, in the, or like the, to make that attractive profile, you'd say? Yeah. So from the candidate standpoint, like I want to, I want to know, I think this is the number one. I want to see real people who already work at your company. So I want to see like case studies of six or like success stories. Like, hey, this is somebody that started here and then they did this, 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 right? So yeah. like I'm talking about like internal promotions, right? Um, that's a big thing. Um, so growth, like one of the, if you look at uh, what candidates want and desire out of companies, um, like number one reason why people leave jobs because they don't feel valued and respected. Right. Another top five one is growth potential. Um, another one is or management and leadership. So like, I would want to know about, you know, having on the profile, like this is our, um, this is our three-year picture or three-year vision, you know, not something that's 10 years. Cause that's just so far out, but like a one year or three year. So that way you can really show people like there's a plan 
not just we're transactional, we're just doing business today to make money. Um, nice. So I'm the moving company owner. And some of the things to, to wrap up what you're saying is that when we're trying to present ourselves, almost like selling our moving company to yeah. that potential hire, we want to show them that there's growth. We want to show them that here's the several employees that we've had, someone that's been here for 10 years, maybe someone that's been here for one year and show the growth that they've, that they've seen and then also where our company is going so that they also feel that they're, they have job security, you can almost say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Throw one in there too. Um, transparency in, I'll reverb this, re rephrase this, complete transparency in income potential and PRs, performance reviews, which PR, right. you know, you're going to talk about a lot of stuff, but you're also probably going to talk about raises. I think so many companies are not good about being like transparent with like, this is how we, this is when your first real, your real performance review will be right. when you have a raised potential. And then here's the next one and the next one, or these are all the KPIs you have to hit in order to get this schedule. I think if a company really just laid that roadmap out for someone, it's like, Hey, this is a 24 month like growth plan or something. And it sounds like so big. But it's really not, you know, it's like you could have like, oh, no, it sounds like it's almost like your mission statement or your vision statement that you have to sit there and put together on your website. Now you're just putting it together almost like a little package plan statement of going, OK, this is where we see it. This is where we want you to see it and grow. And I would think that person goes, OK, great. Like, this is definitely the right fit for me. Yeah. The expectations <laughs> of everything. Like candidates, sure. come, they have one thought, like they were sold this one thing when they got hired but then they get a different thing, right? right? Think about the dating example. It's like, yeah. all right, I saw this, this guy or gal on the dating app and I went through the photos and I was like, okay, cool. I like what I see. But then you got on the first date and eh, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. I don't think yeah. this is gonna work. So sure. expectations, uh, you know, unmet expectations are gonna be a big hindrance for your right. business, yeah. Cool. I, I love it. That, you know what, to me like that, that's almost like the nugget of the show of really, you know, what a moving company owner should provide for a new hire and interview process. And I, and I love it. Thanks, Winston. Yeah. Now for those in the audience listening today, learning about move up for the first time, I'm always about this elevator pitch, right? You got 45 seconds. It's me and you in an elevator. We're going to wrap this up today. It, tell us or tell me what your company is about and and why you'd want move up as a long-term partner yeah most moving companies problem is they're handcuffed by the people they currently have out in the field they don't have complete autonomy and control over the people part of their business and they're really not sure where their next great hire is going to come from we come in and we help start alleviating those pain points because we have something that's a, a real system for recruitment. When you can predict, when you can forecast and predict how many hires you're going to have next week and next month, you now can really grow. And that's something that you can do when you work with us is that you can nice. do forecasting. So it's, it's about having quality people come through the door, sh you know, unshackling yourself from some not having control anymore. I mean, the guys in the field, it's, it's the real big pain point. You know, we're great at helping you get a rock star salesperson that just books, 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 sells you 2 million a year. Sure. But the person that sells you 2 million a year doesn't do you any good if you don't have what? Drivers and the people to audience. manage it. Yeah. To manage it on the job sites. No, that's great. Awesome. Winston. Hey, it's Winston Davis from move up. I really appreciate you having on the show today. Thanks buddy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, let's uh, let's try and catch up a little bit later. And for anybody that wants to reach out to you, what's your website? Yeah, moveupconsulting.com or uh, you can just shoot me an email, Winston at moveupconsulting.com. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. All right. Cool. Have a good one. We'll talk yeah. to you soon. Yeah. All right. Thanks. And that you have it is Moveified with Mark Hershey hosted and Winston Davis from Move Up Consulting. 
don't touch anything. <laughs> it's like doing this, like this upload thing right yeah. now. So you'll see it on your screen. It's so going to upload. How was it? Good? Dude, you're so good at this, dude. Like, you really? <laughs> uh, here's your, your strength. 